All right, welcome to New Endings Radio. This is Darren. I'm your host today, and we have our co-host Stacy with us. Hello. Stacy, we're going to hear uh, part two from Mark from Arizona today. Okay. But before we get into that, I want to make sure that everyone knows that I'm no Dr. Phil. You are not. I'm just a guy. Yes, you are. And we are just here to interview a different person each week with a different issue. Right. And show how that uh, their feelings are basically the same as a lot of you that are sitting out there and listening to this show. And we want to make sure that you know that you're not alone. Correct. There are a lot of people in your situation, and there is no story that we can hear that is worse than somebody else's no, story. No, just, no. There's all kinds of stuff out there. And right. You just have to realize that there is hope, and yes. these people show you the way they did it. If you take that advice and learn from somebody else's mistakes, then you're better for it. That should be the case. Now, if you want to help us out, you can be a new ender. And what's a new ender? Well, a new ender is uh, somebody that helps us by donating $9.76. Sounds very doable. And all you have to do is go to our website, newendings.online, and click on the New Enders button in the Donate page, and you can donate $9.76, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but no. it all adds up. You know what? It is uh, extremely helpful for folks that maybe you know can't help others, but this is a way they can do so. Well, there's a lot of people get get involved in a lot of stuff rather than spend more of your time each day you can just click on the new enders donate nine dollars and 76 cents and we'll get this message to other people because people right. need to hear this there's a yes, lot of people do. out there that just have issues and they're just trying to make it through life right they need to take that first step out of denial and hear how the people we interview have done so and found that hope and redemption with uh, jesus christ now make sure you visit our facebook page new endings radio Okay. You can go on there and just like the page. That yes. would that'd help us a lot. The more likes we have, obviously, more people that will hear it. What is that, that little blue thumb you that's say? That's the blue thumb, <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we gotta, I, I look at the blue thumb a lot, you know. Yes, I, I probably know. put more than I should into the blue thumb, but <laughs> it, it would help us if you guys just went on there and liked the page. Yes. It would certainly help out. And, and uh, Well, in any case, let's just get Mark on here and hear uh, part two of his story now. Where we left off, for those of you, well, if you'd like to hear part one, just go back and you know listen to on the podcast. You can kind of catch up there to find there out exactly go. what happened. Yeah. But basically, uh, we've gone through high school. We have a big drinking and drug problem, and we've been married. We have several mm-hmm. abortions mm-hmm. from girls. That sex were, addiction. Sex addiction yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in Arizona, and Mark has just been thrown from the vehicle in a well, rollover accident what, time what, what? out you missed a huge part well, Darren. he was going to commit suicide yes okay he was going <laughs> to su- commit suicide god <laughs> yeah, saved him praise right. god i guess yes. i should have said yes. that. praise god yeah. and he was about two and a half months almost three months sober okay. then we yeah. hear about a jeep okay. accident well, that's it, where we're at folks <laughs> all right well mark you you yeah. hit the pavement what happened from there so anyways uh i got thrown out and and i was conscious I landed on my side when I hit the ground, thank goodness, on my left side, and I had crushed the whole left side of my body. I had, after finding out, I had collapsed my lung on my left side, crushed my chest, lost my left kidney, and my spleen had exploded in my body. I didn't know all this happened to me at the time of impact, and I was laying there on the ground, and they had shut the interstate down, and they had life flight come in. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right, Mark. No, that's okay. But, uh, Take your time. Yeah. And uh and I knew I was in bad shape because I, I could just, you know, move very minimally, but so they shut the interstate down and they, they uh they took me first because I was a lot worse than my friend. He was seat belted in and they put me in the uh area vac and the or the life flight and the two nurses were on the flight and I remember laying on the gurney and I was looking down at my hands. And they were solid purple, and I didn't know what that was, but finding out later on, I was bleeding internally, and all the blood was pooling in my stomach. So literally, I was near death, and, and the nurses were telling me on the on the helicopter to hang in there, we're almost there, we're almost there. I was about 60 miles from Phoenix, where the accident happened. And I remember one of the female nurses saying, just hang in there. And, and, and then I went out and, and I flatlined or I died. I can, with, with all I am, every fiber of my being, this is the truth. And when I died, God came in my presence and he spoke to me. And it wasn't a verbal voice like you're hearing me talk to you now. It was his voice in the way he spoke to me, but I knew it was him. And the peace 
in the love and the warmth that I felt as he was in my presence. I will never feel that again until I go home to him. Mm. But he told me these words. And he said, Mark, I love you. I'll never leave you. And you're not going to die. I'm not sure where they landed. And they obviously they put me in the trauma unit and uh, they cut me open and uh, or they punched a pipe in me, I guess, to pull the blood out of me. And then I come to and uh, then they put me in and uh, by the grace and mercy of God, I survived. But uh, the doctors had told my mom for like the first three weeks that. You know, we don't think he's going to live. He's going to have to go in for another surgery. You need to come back out here. And they told them that there's no reason, there's no logical reason he should be alive. Wow. And I know it should be alive because God told me that I wasn't going to die. Mm. But there was a point in time uh, where uh, I was in the hospital weeks down the road and it was in the middle of the night, probably. I was, in, I was still in ICU. And I looked out the window and it was dark out and I just started sobbing. And the nurse, the ICU nurse came and she said, what's wrong? And, and I said, I just, I'm trying to do good with my life. And I expressed to her, you know, what I had done, the drugs and getting people pregnant and just my life was a shambles. And, and I wanted to become something and, and to do my life right and, you know, and everything else. And, and she she said, you know what, Mark? She says, I'm a recovering alcoholic myself. And, and we sat there. Well, I lay there in my gurney. Hey, and you weren't going we anywhere. Shared, yeah. We shared we shared about about God and, and about his love and, and staying sober. Nice. And, and I kind of call her my angel nurse mm -hmm. of that night because I was hurting so bad. But did, uh, did you tell her your story about meeting God? Uh, you know, I don't know. I did not. Okay. I was just curious um, how she would I, react. I think, to it. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't share it with her. I don't think. So you were so, in, in ICU for how long? Uh, I was in there for four weeks. Wow. wow that's so, a long time. Yeah. 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 And I was on, I was on, I didn't know anything for three weeks cause they had, they were pumping my body with so much morphine, mm -hmm. uh, to keep the pain from my, from my internal injuries yeah, that I didn't know anything for three weeks. Yeah. So you, so. you come out of this at some point, mm -hmm. I mean, how long did it take you to get back yeah. after you got out of ICU to get back into the regular swing of things? And I was, uh, I was in the hospital for five weeks. Then they had to fly me back to Chicago. Um, I had tubes in my feeding tube in my stomach and second degree burn road rash all over my body. Wow. And, uh, my mom took care of me and so I was in Chicago from, I want to say, June, mid-June until mid-September, recovering from my accident. Okay. So you you were doing all this, and you had convinced yourself that uh, you were going to become a police officer. Yes. Okay. And, and, and that dream has not died can, then. No. And the, and the one thing that I I want to exclamate is, is that my faith was was stronger than anything, and I never— my friends would come over and visit me and they would say, you know, and I told them, I'd sit out on the front porch with them and I said, yeah, I'm going to be a cop when I get back to Phoenix. And they would laugh and mm. dude, you used to buy drugs and deal drugs and alcohol. And, you know, how can you even think about being a cop? And, but there was all these times they said this, you know, you would think that a person would have doubts, but I can tell you from the entire time from my car accident until um, I went back to Phoenix and everything, I never had the thought. Not a thought could enter my mind of doubt. And wow. it was like a no vacancy sign for Satan. And God <laughs> put that on my forehead so Satan couldn't touch me and put those thoughts in my head. I like that. A no vacancy that. sign for Satan. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, Mark, nowhere to be found. Right. Yeah. Because God, God had his hand on me. All right. And, and God knew my heart. All right, Mark. You know. We're going to take a, we need to hear a little bit more about how the police officer thing came around. So we're going to take a short break. And uh, okay. we'll be back in just a minute uh, with uh, Mark from Arizona. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Darren, your host for New Endings Radio. Here on New Endings Radio, we talk about all of life's hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Every week, we talk to real people with real struggles. We hear about what life experiences led them to reaching the breaking point and finally reaching out for help. We hear how they overcame denial and how Celebrate Recovery and their true higher power, Jesus Christ, help them get their life back. Celebrate Recovery is not all about alcohol and drugs. 
There are many things in life that keep us held down. All of our hurts, habits, and hang-ups keep us from being the people we were meant to be. Celebrate Recovery helps us break those chains that keep us down and deal with our denial. For those of you on the fence that know you have an issue but think you're the only one, listen to how these people have the same feelings you do. Then get yourself over the fear to change. We can all change, but no one can make you change. You have to do it for yourself. No one else can do it for you. Okay, welcome back to New Endings Radio. We're talking to Mark from Arizona today, and uh, he's just been through a horrific accident. Right. And life lighted. Right. Flatlined. Yeah. Yep. Met Jesus. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, just quite yeah. a bit of the story. We're now to catch you up. We're we're uh, out of the hospital, and it's time to become a police officer now. And right. Evidently, he's got, yeah. No doubt in his mind, yeah, no he's doubt. got uh, no Everybody vacancy. Else does, but no vacancy a, for Satan yeah, on him, right. so, stamped on him. <laughs> so, how, so how did that go then, Mark? Give give us an update there. Yeah. So I, I came back to Phoenix uh, mid September, still with broken ribs, um, to go to get hired to take about three to four months to get hired to go through all their processing. So I applied for a couple of departments and applied for Phoenix and Phoenix police department. Uh, I went through the process as, a, as I was uh, going through the process. You, you come to the point where, um, you know, everything was fine, but obviously other than the drugs and everything else that I did the crazy stuff, but you know, and they asked me, you know, do you drink? Well, no, I don't because I, I've been sober for nine months, right. you know? So that was a true statement when they yeah. put me on the polygraph. Yeah. Uh, when it came to the drug situation, they, you know, so you, you did fine Mark, except we have a little problem with the drugs uh, section and we have to run that by a second time and said, okay. And, you know, I knew God, you know, had a purpose for me and I, I wasn't fearing it. And uh, so they went through and they asked me the questions again. They said, okay, Mark, you, you know, you passed everything. You, you know, we're going on. You got one more section to go. And, you know, and, and, and I questioned myself and people would ask me, well, how did you pass that polygraph after everything you did and all the drugs and stuff? And, and, you, and God reminded me when I asked myself that question, he said, remember what I did with Saul? And I turned him into Paul mm-hmm. and all the sinners that helped me. You know, and he can do that with anybody. Everyone on this earth is created for a purpose. Absolutely. Purpose. Yes. And uh, even though I had a dark side, God saw me as his child and he saw my heart more than anything. Well, I can and tell yes, you from experience that he can use anybody yes. because you yes. can't, you can't yes. do, you cannot be in a bad enough spot and have him not use you. That's exactly so right. You yes. just have to, to believe and just come to where you need to be. That's all. Mm-hmm. The reason yeah. you're doing all this stuff because you're not in the right place. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. got hired on then, I guess, huh? Yeah, I got hired on January second of 1990 and put 31 years on the police department with wow. police department. Uh, 31 years, yeah. nice. Were you married during this yeah. time? I got married uh, three times. Uh, actually, three two and the other one was a short one. The first one, I got married for I was 17 years to my first wife. Okay. And um, what happened there? Uh, that well. I had lost everything financially. Um, we were, I was very, we were very strong in the church and the Lord and everything and involved with the church. We clanged or we had our differences in, in our relationship with Christ, but bottom line is we got divorced and I didn't know why. And I lost all this money that we had. Um, and I had uh, been taking antidepressants before this. Also, I got divorced. I, I didn't even want to function in my I couldn't function and since I'd taken off of work and, and, uh, I actually, that's, I went out one time and I bought two cases of beer and I had been sober for 18 years, I think. Wow. At the time. So you'd been sober for 18 years and then the yeah. marriage goes and bad then, and you bought a couple cases of beer. Yeah. And I sat there at my house and I was going to drink them until I couldn't think or pass out or just, oh. and, uh, you know, by grace and mercy of God, that was the only time I went back out and drank. Oh, huh? that's good. But, I went and I saw my psychiatrist and he had given me uh, some medication to change. And unfortunately for that, that medication caused compulsive gambling, which they never posted on the box of the medication. (laughs) And within three weeks of taking that medication, I was in the casinos for four to six days for seven years. Wow. Four to six days for seven years gambling. Yes. Well, then because I, I was angry at God because I you know, everything that I thought I was doing everything right. And then 
to lose everything. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then this medication comes along, which I know was, was almost took my life because I was gambling so much. Well, I'll, um, I'll tell you what, we're, we have uh, a little bit in common. That's true. I lived in Las Vegas for 10 years. So oh, yeah, yeah. An, an Las Vegas. Yeah. is not a good place. An for, addictive personality yeah, in no. Las Vegas isn't good. So I know how that gambling can take over you and, and just really control you. And I know yeah. I'm just going to guess right now that you were probably having some money problems. Um, I was having yeah. money problems back then. I, well, I yeah, back then. That's yeah, what I that's, meant. That's when what you're he gambling. meant. I hope you don't have them now. <laughs> yeah. I was living, I was actually having to Falling sick because I didn't have money for gas to go to work. Yeah, there wow. you go. There's wow. the gambling story for you. Those are the ones I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's yes, it's great. It's a crazy so, deal. All right. Yeah. Well, you live in Phoenix and you're going to Vegas to gamble. Yeah. They have they have a uh, uh, Indian casinos around here. There's a lot oh, of I see. Okay. Indian land out here. Oh, okay. Many many casinos around so the valley. It's read Phoenix, readily so. available for you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Take your money. Right. Yeah. So, they, yeah. They do. So you're married three times. Were you, uh, yeah. the second marriage, were you still gambling when you're, I was, yes, I was, I was gambling still. And, How'd she feel about uh, that? I thought she had a good job and I thought that we could make it together and gamble or not gamble, but to retire together. Um, because I wanted to retire, uh, after 20 years, but that lasted two years. The marriage did mm. and my, my gambling continued. Well, why did the marriage so, end? Because I was gambling. Okay. So and I was gambling. never around. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. She, That'll you know, do I, it. Neglected. I'd, I'd, I'd get off of work from my detective job and, and I, at two in the afternoon, I'd be in the casino at two 30 in the afternoon. Sometimes I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get home until 9 a.m. the next morning. Okay. Right. And I have to call in sick. Yeah. Been so, there, done that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well that, I know why you got divorced now. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you, you, that's two marriages. What, what about the third marriage? The third one, it was an annulment. Uh, we dated for a few years and uh, then we talked about getting married. And uh, I think uh, some of it was health issues that I had, but there was no alcohol or drugs involved. Uh, very, She's a very spiritual Christian woman and everything else. But there were things that uh, we just could not resolve and uh, probably shouldn't have gotten married uh, yeah. to begin with. So, And I had some major uh, health issues um, going on with COVID and finding out that I had pneumonia and then they did a chest x-ray and found out I had a, uh, ascending thoracic aortic aneurysm. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, time out, time out. This, was, this sounds like more of a, a story we need to get into. We're going to have to take right, a little break. Right. But let me ask you one question yeah. in those last three marriages. You know, we know that the uh, sexual addiction was a issue for you. Were you, were you cheating on your wives? Um, no. Okay. Um, so that good. part was done. No. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Well, that's good. No. I can right, tell I just, you, I, I was not. Yeah. I was just curious if that had ended at that point, or if that was more of the problem. So that's good. You know, honestly, when I I, I went to treatment, oh, um, okay. for that, and uh, excellent. I'm right. sorry. We'll, we'll be right back. We gotta we gotta okay. take a little break here. So we'll be right back with uh, Mark from Arizona, and we'll hear the uh, end of this story, which uh, all our stories come to. Yeah, that's why we're talking yeah. to yeah. folks. That, that's right. So we'll be <laughs> yeah. right back. Yep. Hi, this is your host, Darren. We hear stories every week from average people with common issues. You may be listening and thinking that your life isn't as bad as those people. Well, let me bring you back to reality. If you are unhappy with your current position in your marriage, or you have convinced yourself that your drinking is not an addiction because you don't drink as much as those other people you know, then it's bad. And you need rockyourfamily.org. Rockyourfamily.org will help individuals, couples, and families dealing with addiction, infidelity, or just growing apart through counseling, intensive counseling, IOP recovery, both online or in person, and even retreats to just find yourself again. Think about your life right now. If you are living every day in a place you are not happy with, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this to myself? It only takes a couple of clicks to see how rockyourfamily.org can help you in your marriage, in your addiction, or in your family. Go to rockyourfamily.org and do something different. That makes a lot more sense than just hoping things will get better on their own. That's rockyourfamily.org. Okay, welcome back to New Endings Radio. We have uh, Mark from Arizona on here. Yeah, we've heard uh, quite a story. Yes. And again, yeah. if you want to hear part one, this is part two. If you want mm -hmm. to hear part one, go to the podcast. You can get those uh, on any podcast site. Just uh, search for New Endings Radio. Or you can go to our website newendings.online or you can go to our facebook page which is new endings radio and you can get access to all the podcasts there and you can see what happened in part one 
Right. Because part one is just as interesting as part two right. is. So. And we're kind of up to current times yes, now we because are. We're he was close. diagnosed with uh, COVID. Yes. He, he, yeah, yeah, that, right. that tells so us after, where we are time-wise. That's right. So everything else, and uh, now you go in and yeah. find out you got COVID. What, what happened there? Yeah, so I had gotten COVID, and uh, that almost killed me, actually, the, the COVID itself. And then after having the COVID, I had contracted pneumonia, and, and uh, they found that out through a chest X-ray. And when they did the chest X-ray, they found out that I had the uh, ascending thoracic aortic aneurysm. Uh, wow. my heart and uh which shocked me i never knew i had and it's it can be very deadly if it if it ruptures right you, you die before you get the ground but and then they had also told me that i had a, a five centimeter mass on my liver and a five centimeter mass on my right kidney and i had lost my left one in the car accident so you were the so, you're probably the only person in the world that was lucky to get covid right that's what i was thinking the covid that could have killed him yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let uh, them know. The right, right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll yeah. we'll have, we'll have to add that to all their stati st statistics. Yeah. There, there you we go. go. <laughs> if I can spit it out. All right. All right. Well, go ahead. So uh, yeah. you had some so, uh, masses or something? Right, yeah. yeah. He's yeah, got one so kidney then, left and he's got a mass yeah. on it now. My doctor's telling me that I might need to, they might need to, you know, find a kidney donor for me and not knowing if it was cancer, but he, you know, he's referring to it might be and, uh, which raised my blood pressure through the roof. And after hearing all this stuff, I called my boss up and, uh, told him from the hospital that I was retiring that Friday. Oh, you know, whatever paper we needed to do, I, I was done. So wow. You were convinced you know, that was um, it. Yeah. 31 years it was enough. And, and, uh, uh, I needed to take care of myself. Right. And uh, I uh, went ahead and, and uh, they did all these tests. And, and, you know, thank goodness when they found out the masses, they're not cancer, but they're little pieces of uh, spleen that had grown over 30 years from my accident when they took my spleen out from my car accident. They, wow. They grew from microscopic pieces. They left, to they left pieces inside masses. you? They didn't, yeah. they didn't get it all, huh? Wow. How do you like that? No, they were microscopic. Wow. Yeah, okay. he said. My, my spleen was in three pieces when they opened my body cavity oh. up. He said his spleen so, exploded. Yeah, from the impact of hitting the ground. Wow. Yeah. Since then, I've been uh, taking care of myself health-wise and, Good. Um, you know, staying sober. I've well, going see, back. And, now, I've, you say you, you're staying sober, but, you know, you've had a couple issues, you know, where you'd stopped for a long time and yeah. then something went haywire yeah. and that type of thing. Um, yes. What are you doing now? I mean, if something goes haywire again, are, are, do we have to worry about having another conversation with you on a relapse program or something? <laughs> are you you're pretty well no, set? I, or you well, got, I, what are you doing? A I, foundation I, of some sort? Yeah, with with uh, there are some uh, places out here, the church on the streets that I'm involved with, and some other organizations that I reach out to um, that deal with homeless people, uh, addicted people, people that are sex trafficking victims, mm. people that have come out of prison. Um, so you're doing I've, volunteer I've this, work for I, them? I do volunteer work, oh. and I used to when I worked in Phoenix as a cop, I I would go out on the streets and I would reach out to the homeless people. Wow. And I would share and I would share the love of Christ with them and tell them that they they are and it's the truth and and that's why everybody needs to hear this message that everyone was created by God for a purpose. Nobody was was created by accident. And that is the truth. It's his word. And if you're struggling and you have issues, you need to know that that he loves you more than you'll ever know. Amen. And and I I thrive on that because I was hurting at one time and I wanted to kill myself. And I know today that God loves me and I have a, mm -hmm. he has a purpose for me. By doing his will and loving him and having a personal relationship with him every day, reading the word every day, talking to people that are, you know, suffering about any kind of addiction or, or whatever right. um, can help you. And I, you know, teach a men's class at, uh, the church on the streets facility. And, you know, the, the one story, the one guy told me I had, uh, I had men's group. And after we shared, he, he came up to me, he said, you're, you're a police detective and you're spending your own time and your own, you know, out of your own time to, to come here and share with us and, and to try to help us and stuff. And why would you do that? Being a cop and we're these bad, you know, we're these bad guys that were in prison. And, and it just, it broke my heart. And I just started crying. And I, I looked at him and I said, 
you have no idea how much I love you guys. And it's the truth. And God loves you too. And you need to know that about yourself. I'm no different than you. We're right. both created the same. So I might be, I might be a cop in, uh, a, a profession, but that's not who I am. That doesn't define me. Right. That's I'm, a good, uh, I live, you know, that's a good yeah. thing to remember. Cause, uh, we're no different yep. than, you know, a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, well, we're involved in celebrate recovery. So we get a, a lot of people that, uh, uh, don't want to come to celebrate recovery because it, it's those people. Those people, you know, right? The, those people have a problem, but I don't. And so it's a, it's yeah. good to keep a level head and remember that uh, we're all just people. And we all yeah. are children of God. And we all have issues, right? And yes, they all affect us in different ways. Some people end up homeless. Some people never lose their house, but they're in just bad a shape as the person mm-hmm. that's laying in the gutter. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's always always the same. So yes, uh, give me a quick rundown on this. Church on the streets, is that what you call it? Yes. Okay. What do yeah. they do exactly? They go out it's, to the homeless or? It's, yeah, it's in the area that I used to work when I was there. It's a hotel and they house 420 people, victims of sex trafficking, homeless people, um, people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol off the streets that want to get sober. It's a Christian based uh, facility. Um, they also take in people that are coming out of prison wow. that are mandated by the courts to go there Nice. and okay. they have classes they have to adhere by and they have rules they have to adhere by. And if they don't stick to them, then they get booted. It's pretty much their last chance. Okay, good. Well, that's called you know, uh, church on the streets. If any of you want to look that up uh, later, maybe you can yeah, do something for them. Tr- yeah. Cots and, and church on the streets. They're right. located in Phoenix and, uh, right. Gallup, New Mexico. And uh, right. I think they have one in LA. So, wow. All yes. right, Mark. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, we were able to squeeze part two in there just under the wire there. So yeah. we appreciate that. Yeah. And just uh, everything that you uh, opened up to us and being honest with everybody, just to hopefully help someone else out there that's listening and can relate to yeah. what you were doing. So right. thank well, you very much, Mark. Thank you for, thank for, every- you for letting me share. And, and I pray that uh, this may help someone or yeah. others. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. And for everyone else out there, we'll be uh, back here next week on New Endings Radio. We like to end each week with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next.